Ladies and gentlemen, hey, hi, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. The rifle category here in Warzone saw some decently significant changes with the Season 4 Reloaded update. Obviously, some buffs to certain weapons, some nerfs to others. So today, I wanted to break down the new top five best rifles to be using in the game, whether it be for more of a sniper support angle, maybe a long range angle. We got some versatility in there for sure. So as we break it all down today, if you enjoy the video at any point, let me know by dropping a like on it. it would be seriously appreciated. And if you're new to the channel or if you haven't subscribed yet, every day I got you covered with everything going on in COD, news, updates, loadouts, tips. You're going to find it all right here. So feel free to hit that subscribe button and turn on those post notifications. And also today is the final day that code immortal will get you 20% off your entire gamer advantage order. This is the best possible discount you can get right now. So if you want to pick up a pair of new frames for yourself, they got plenty of options. They offer prescription or regular lenses. And the link for that will be down in the description below. So coming in at number five here, I've got the Volk. There's a few drawbacks to using this gun in general that I think lower it down to number five rather than, you know, four or three. Mainly the fact that at long range, it isn't really a great option right now, especially compared to some of these rifles that are higher up on the list. So it lacks some long range versatility, but for close range and sniper support area like the mid range, this thing is insanely, insanely good. You can get a strafe build using things like the VDD 287 and things like the adjustable stock together. You can get a nice hybrid build that's low recoil, but still very fast. All around this weapon is a ton of fun to use right now. So first up, I'm going for the recoil booster. I'm also going to use the 428 barrel. The cons here are really not that bad, especially if you want to use this as an aggressive build. You can use this longer barrel and get better control and a better range and better velocity without really missing out on much in terms of mobility and aggression. Uh, Slate Reflector or the 2.5 times optic honestly worked really, really good here for that close to mid-range area. The adjustable stock for that better initial control and strafe speed is super nice and really fun to use. So I enjoy using that on there. I've got the Strife Angle, the underbarrel for that horizontal control. There is a decent amount of that on this weapon. You could either go for the 45 round mag, which is going to be a lot easier to use, but the damage per mag is kind of bad. So 60, I feel like is the more versatile and consistent option to use here. Obviously a little bit worse control, but the magazine capacity there and the damage per mag is a lot better. We're going to go for lengthened here for that better velocity. Uh, you can go for a couple of different rear grips, honestly. Uh, things like polymer and hatched are always good choices. Hatched more so now after recent updates, but rubber is not bad for that vertical control. You could even go for something like taped though, if you want a better movement, like there's definitely several options here. We'll go for hatched just for the sake of control. For perk one, I like perfectionist or fleet for the better movement or for the better control. Again, if you want to focus on just recoil, perfectionist is probably the way to go. And then perk two, fully loaded or on hand if you like that faster ADS. Makes it nice and aggressive and perfect for that sniper support area and those close to mid-range fights. Now at number four, I've got the Vargo, one of the few non-Vanguard weapons in the game that can actually compete at the top of the meta right now. This thing is low recoil, has a very, very competitive TTK over range. Obviously, this is meant for mid to long range. The Vargo S is more of like a sniper support build and definitely not as good as this option here. Vargo 52, just it hits strong, easy to use, consistent, reliable. And if you want something that maybe feels like it has a bit more personality than a low recoil, just laser beam Vanguard gun, this does offer a bit more of a challenge, but with a, a decent reward at the end, right? Because it does actually hold its own in these engagements. So we got Grue Suppressor, Task Force Barrel, we got the Spetsnaz Grip, the 60 round mag, and you guessed it, the three times optic, the standard copy and paste Cold War rifle setup, but it's definitely working on the Vargo 52 right now. Now at number three, we've got one of my new favorite weapons in the game, the KG M40. This thing is low recoil, super easy to use, but it's not like insanely broken like the pre-patch NZ was. It is more balanced, it is more realistic, and for that reason, it doesn't feel like super cheesy or obnoxious to use. Not everyone's gonna be spamming the KG M40 because it's so broken like the NZ. It is a lot more fun to use, if you will, because it's not in that level of just obnoxious and annoying, right? So here we are starting off with the MX silencer. We also got the shrouded barrel for better control and velocity. The three to six times scope on here makes it feel like it has no recoil at any zoom three times or six times. I also got the padded stock on there for better control. For the under barrel, you could go for strife angled or you could go for carver. There is a decent amount of vertical and horizontal movement. So either way, you're gonna be dealing with one of them. Strife angled works well for me though. For the initial magazine here, going for the 60 round extended mag, none of the other ones really feel all that great. We got lengthened. We also got hatched on there as well. Perk one, we're going to end up going for tight grip to help out more with that control. And then perk two, fully loaded or again on hand if you want that for that slightly faster ADS, but super easy to use and very consistent rifle. Now at number two, probably no surprise here, but we do have the NZ41. Yes, this saw a nerf with the season four reloaded update to its control and to its minimum damage range to that long range damage, but 
it still is so easy to use. The control is next to nothing still. And because of that, even though its damage is slightly worse over range, you're still going to land shots consistently and it still will fry enemies. If you're looking for something reliable and easy to use, whether you're on console or PC, this is one of the top options, hence why it's at the number two spot, right? So the thing is still holding its own just fine. So here we're using the same setup as always. MX Silencer, we got the 360 barrel on there as well. The three to six times scope or 2.5 times if you like that as well, not a bad choice. We got the EPAC stock to help out with that, uh, some of that newly formed recoil, even though it's still not all that much. We got Strife angled on here for some of that horizontal movement to minimize that. The 50 round mag is still a way to go. 30 and 40 just is not enough to actually compete in like trios and quads, right? So we got to go for the 50. We've got lengthened on here. We've got hatched on here. The usual combo there. Perk one, I'm gonna end up going for brace for that initial control. And then perk two, like always, it is fully loaded or it's on hand, depending on what you want more. Same old, same old setup here. And this thing is still an absolute beast. Then at number one, I've got the AS44, simply because the reward for using this thing is so great. If you remember back on Verdansk, we had a meta that was the AMAX and the Kilo at one point. The AMAX was a lot harder to use, but was a lot faster killing than the Kilo. The Kilo was low recoil, but had that slower TTK. And so many people opted for the Kilo because it was easy, whereas good players opted for the AMAX and they fried. That's how I view the AS44 versus things like the KG and the NZ right now. If you want a challenge, but you want a decent reward with really good TTK, go for the AS44. This thing is a monster at all ranges. Here we're starting with the MX silencer. We got the 615 barrel to help out with some of that control and some of that damage range as well. 2.5 times or three to six, you know the drill by now with that. We've got the custom stock here for better control during sustained fire. Carver foregrip here for that better control alongside the 50 round mag, which will make it a little bit easier to use as well. The damage per mag is kind of eh, but with that general TTK, you are frying everyone. We've got lengthened. We've also got hatched on there once more. For perk one, we're going for disable. This will give us uh, that slowdown effect if we're hitting leg shots, but also that secret added velocity that's there as well. Then perk two, we've got fully loaded again or on hand if you desire that. Because that DPM and because you burn through ammo with this thing, fully loaded is honestly pretty useful there just because you don't have to worry about ever running out. And that being said, that's going to wrap things up for this one. Those are the new top five rifles here in Warzone right now. That's going to wrap things up for today. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know by dropping a like on it. And if you're new here or if you have not already subscribed, you already know every single day I got you covered with all things going on in COD, news, updates, loadouts, tips, you name it, you're going to find it here on the channel. So feel free to hit that subscribe button and turn on those post notifications. But once again, thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, take it easy. Have an awesome rest of your day. And I will catch you guys later. Peace out.